if you look at the previous peak in 2017, where we bottomed out, um, the, the percentage difference on that on that drop we had from the all time high before that, which was at 61 percent, the drop we went down. Yeah, 61 was down. What was the uh, uh, absolute bottom we, we hit? One uh, percent. Yeah. So that percentage difference, if you actually divide those and do a percentage of the percentages, was double of what we did this one because this one we went from 63 to 53, I believe. Uh, yep. Yeah. Around there, 60. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So, so that that drop was a lot less, and and it was because we didn't have the crazy uh, hype cycle peak, and so less of those older coins were convinced uh, to sell. You're just like, oh, I'm not, I'm not as excited to sell. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to show me more to, to let go of these coins. And, and it, you can see that lower highs and higher highs on this trend, right? Of this of this hodler, uh, one year hollow wave. If you go back to the beginning of, of Bitcoin, we keep putting in higher highs and higher lows, right? So that tells me, oh, that's the adoption curve of crypto. That's the adoption curve of Bitcoin. This is this is not just Bitcoin. This is related to all coins that are that are legitimate coins. Is mm. you have more interest over the long term if they're sticking around in the space. And you're going to see higher lows and higher highs on these sort of adoption metrics, right? And, and the one-year hodl wave is an adoption metric. So um, basically, what we've seen, though, the, the, the um, meaningful thing to me is we've recovered this to an all-time high in about 250 days, whereas in 2018, it took us 800 days to get back to an all-time high. So, mm. so this, the, the, the just the amount of time it, it, we've recovered. First of all, we only dropped half as much, and then we recovered it in in like three times or four times the, the speed. So, um, we're primed. We're, it's just prime. We're absolutely prime for the next leg up. <laughs> like, like the question to me is, will this metric start to downtrend from here? Because we are at an all time high now, right. um, um, and it will. Like, I'm interested to see how how much it slowly downtrends as the price goes up. Um, uh, or because the highest I really I predicted, like in my myself, I saw this metric going was around sixty seven percent. Like to me, that would be like the high because like it, it just it can only go so high before it just gets ridiculous. But mm. you know, it, it, so yeah, I was like, okay, is it, it's at an all time high of sixty three now. Is it going to get as high as like sixty seven? That's kind of the window, and then it will start to see it drop as the price runs. So the question was, is this going to keep accumulating for a few more months um, and and get silly on the supply side? Um, or is the price going to move and it's going to slowly start to cause people to sell? And so far, what we're seeing is the price is moving and a very small amount of those coins are being sold. So, yeah, yeah. that's basically it. But yeah, to get to, for people that um, just want to understand the position we're in, I mean, uh, we're in a great position. We're at an all time high on, on a very important metric, uh, which is a supply side metric that shows the amount of uh, strong hands that are not, not, the key point is they're not going to sell unless the price runs. They're comfortable holding they've been in for a year plus and so they're probably got a decent uh a decent like they bought at a decent point or even mm. if they didn't buy at a decent point they have enough conviction long term because they've been in the space over a year they've educated themselves so yeah that's it they're just they're just not going to sell unless the price goes up <laughs> yeah. the, the vast majority of them of course and when we've the, never seen them sell really unless the price has gone up uh as far as a significant amount of them right right and like you said like we, we will we'll peak here uh on this percentage at some point uh, and then once we start rolling over, we will basically see the price pump and that's, you know, uh, how, how this thing works. But the, the thing that's interesting about this chart is this is the chart that the IRS hates the most because this is the, the people with the long-term capital gains. <laughs> well, that's another but, um, point, yeah, held over a year, right? These guys are paying, uh, that's, that's another, yeah, another good point as far as like why, why this uh, amount gets held over a year. It's also tax reasons too. Good, good point. Yep. And we're coming up to tax day here pretty soon. Um, so that that will definitely uh, be interesting. I think uh, JE in the chat asked you a question. He says, "Are we still uh, in a buy area?" Uh, according to you, Plancy, what do you what do you think about that? What, what does he mean by buy? Like buy area relative to what? Like as a, a long term holder or on shorter time frames? Because yeah, I don't. He doesn't. He doesn't specify. But I, I'm assuming long term. I mean, if you don't have any Bitcoin at this point, you, you want to get in, right? Like it, it's 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 one of those things where, yeah, I mean, you want to DCA in because you don't know, we could still pull back. And like, Charlie, you, you could probably speak to that better. Like, yeah, we could see a pullback to whatever, like mm. mid 40s, like, 40s, like, but but yeah, I mean, I would say if you have no Bitcoin at this point, they, the downside, so like I, like I already talked about, like my downside floor models at 27,000. Uh, so um, if you're buying here, the worst case scenario is we go down to 27, which is highly unlikely. Um, uh, you know, a, a, a trip into the 30s would would be even surprising, but like that could happen. So you just have to understand, like, what's your downside? Okay, downside risk is maybe we go to the 30s somehow, 
absolute worst case, we have like three black swans and we go down to 27. Okay, can I hold during that? Can I hold? But if I don't buy now, you know, what am I going to miss out on? Like, so, so, like, I don't know. It's just, what do you guys think about that? Like, it, it, we obviously the prices moved here, so like we're we're kind of overheated on maybe some metrics in the short term, like on really short time frames. Charlie, you'd be better to well, speak, speak to the specifics on it, right? And going back to kind of uh, your thoughts as well as like your questions. So your what one question was short or long term, right? And we we were basically airing to long term because. Um, you know, that's how, how you need to look at crypto, right? And so yeah, if you have a five-year time horizon, then I still feel like Bitcoin has a 10 to 30 X. Um, and if you have a five ter- five year plus time horizon, I feel like you have very low downside risk. So mm. it, it, as long as you're not buying at a peak of a cycle, um, you know, you're in a good position. And, and, and right now, like on some of the metrics I'm, I have, um, th- yeah, I would say this is like a three out of 10 risk level kind of in that range. So, so yeah, right. well, it, it's but, a good time to buy in, in that, in that regard, um, on a long time, a five plus year time horizon, great time to buy. Oh, excellent. Uh, and, and, and a lot more upside potential than downside risk, right? Like it's just, yeah, it's just the reality of it is, is you still have over a five year time horizon. You have a 10 to 30 X in my opinion, like it's just right. And, and, and looking at this chart that you're talking about here, right. With, with the long-term holders, um, basically increasing, and the price, you know, basically, um, you know, going going down, having that kind of divergence there, like shows me that this price here, right, is absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, when we saw this previously, when when this was going up, right, but the price is going down, there's a low, right? We saw this coming up and the price coming down low, right? Price coming up or price coming down, this going up low. So like you said, um, you know, if we do come down, like the floor is still higher than what it was before. Uh, 10K Bitcoin, 20K Bitcoin, sorry, not happening. Uh, so, you know, if you do, let's say you bought, let's say you're going for Bitcoin. And like you said, right, we we come down to that floor model, right? Let's say you buy here and we come down to uh, 27K. Um, it's a 41% decrease, like from where we are now compared to what we did during that downtrend. Right, we had a fifty-two percent decrease. The worst is over, absolutely over. Yeah, in my opinion. Sorry, Charlie, I I, I misquoted a couple of things there, uh, or one thing specifically. Like uh, I said, ten thirty x on Bitcoin. That's a ten-year time horizon, not a five-year time horizon. Right. Um. So yeah, that that's like over a ten-year time horizon, which I know is a lot for a lot of people. But over a ten-year time horizon, I still feel like Bitcoin has a ten or thirty x. Five five-year time horizon. I mean, that changes things, but still, I mean, five years, your upside potential is still way bigger than your downside risk and and oh, yeah. and, and last thing i'll mention i'll let you go into some stuff here like the, the, the all-time high we're at on that one year uh huddle wave the last time we were there was a month before we started our move from 10 to forty thousand. so like that that was i think yeah it was august september range um it was right before we started moving uh, the last time we we're at this specific percentage so yeah it, it was it was it was kind of like the peak question is yeah does it go higher we don't know but um but you got to remember like right now bitcoin's at whatever 45 47 thousand um we had the same percentage on this metric which is kind of like uh potential to move up um when price is only at 10. so we're, we're four and a half times higher in the price and yet mm-hmm. we have the same bullish uh setup is, is kind of the point so yeah and if we from here right 10k to 60k that was a 6x Right. I mean, if we did a uh, like a five X from the current price, that's 200, you know, two hundred thousand uh, dollar Bitcoin. Right. So that, that's kind of kind of interesting. Not saying that the same amount of X's are going to happen by any means, but, um, you know, like things looking pretty good. <laughs> and it sounds like crazy numbers for people. And like I get people have a hard time wrapping them, their head around these sorts of numbers. But people have been thinking this since Bitcoin's been a dollar. Like, right. like the whole time Bitcoin's been moving up from a dollar, people have been thinking like, oh, thousand dollars. I mean, it sounds pretty high. Ten thousand dollars sounds pretty high. Hundred thousand dollars sounds pretty high. Like, and, and you got to remember how much money is on the planet. It's just ridiculous amounts of money. So, yeah, I mean, I just don't see how we don't see these higher numbers at some point. Like, it, yep. it sounds absurd to say um, like hundreds of thousands of dollars for a Bitcoin, but I just, just not that crazy when you really crunch the numbers on it, on everything. So, but yeah, so, anyway. Yeah. Plan C, Charlie. I have a question for you guys. Like, why are you guys so fucking bearish? (laughs) (laughs) No, No, I mean, I'm saying that jokingly, obviously, but uh, 
But I, I do believe in a five-year time. If we're talking five years, yeah, quarter million plus for sure yeah. on BQZ. Per, yeah, it's for sure going to hit seven. Yeah, it's seven years. I think that Millie comes into 